Welcome to the Sky at Night magazine podcast, your monthly dose of astronomy on demand. Hello and welcome to the Sky at Night magazine vodcast. This month we're focusing on the giant of our solar system, the planet Jupiter. Now 2009 is the International Year of Astronomy, and amongst other things we're celebrating 400 years since Galileo turned his telescope to the night sky. One of the things he observed in 1610 was the planet Jupiter. When he observed it, he saw four points of light around the planet, which today we know as the Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. Now Galileo's observations changed the way we look at our solar system, but Jupiter itself is a fascinating system in its own right. Jupiter's body is vast compared to the other planets in the solar system. At around 143,000 kilometers in diameter, you could fit a little over 11 Earths across its equator. Its atmosphere is about 90% hydrogen gas, with around 10% helium, as well as other gases such as methane, ammonia, and even water vapour. At its centre, astronomers think that Jupiter has a solid rock and metal core, which, incredibly, is about 10 times the size of Earth. Jupiter is famous for its swirling clouds and coloured bands, and you can see these through even a small reflecting telescope of around 4 to 6 inches in diameter. They're actually vast sweeping regions of fast moving gases billowing up and down in Jupiter's atmosphere. And around Jupiter's equator, some of the wind speeds can reach 250 miles per hour. But Jupiter's most famous weather phenomena is undoubtedly the Great Red Spot. The Great Red Spot is a huge swirling storm 26,000 kilometers across that was first studied by astronomers in the 17th century. Modern day missions like NASA's Galileo probe and the earlier Voyager 1 probe have shown it in much greater detail, along with the countless other smaller storms which swell in and around Jupiter's many cloud bands. Jupiter's storms aren't the only trait it shares with the Earth though. It also plays host to powerful aurorae at its polar regions. This remarkable view from the Hubble Space Telescope shows the aurora on Jupiter glowing in ultraviolet light as energetic electrons slam into Jupiter's upper atmosphere. But it isn't just electrons which smash into Jupiter. In 1994, the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 crashed into the planet as the world watched on. Telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope observed the impact sites appearing as dark bruises in Jupiter's atmosphere. More recently, on the 19th of July this year, amateur astronomer Anthony Wesley from Australia discovered a dark mark appearing on Jupiter's disk. Further observations with ground-based telescopes and the Hubble Space Telescope showed the mark to be around 8,000 kilometers across. Now, investigations into what caused the mark are still ongoing, but astronomers think that whatever hit Jupiter was at least a few hundred meters across. You too can follow in the footsteps of Galileo this month and observe Jupiter for yourself. It's visible at the moment in the September night skies. Look roughly south at about 11pm and it's sitting there shining brightly about 20 degrees above the horizon. A small telescope with a mirror of around 4 to 6 inches in diameter will show the planet's four brightest moons as well as some of the more prominent markings on its disk. It's fun to watch the moons change position night after night just as Galileo did 400 years ago. Well that's about it for our tour of Jupiter this month. If you want to go out and observe, we've got the perfect guide for you in Sky at Night magazine this month as we show you how to observe 40 deep sky objects in just one night. And we'll show you how to build a home observatory. So why not go out and grab a copy and I'll see you next month.